Assalamualaikum. My name is Dr. Tejeen, and uh, today I'm going to demonstrate to you the practical of osmotic fragility of red blood cells. The method we are using today is Sanford's method. So the basic principle of this practical is that this test measures the resistance of red blood cell to hemolysis when they are exposed to a range of hypotonic solutions. Hypotonic meaning less amount of solute and more water. Solutions will be of sodium chloride with gradually increasing dilution. The apparatus that will be needing for this procedure is 15 test tubes, a steel rack to place the test tubes in, a disposable syringe, a long nozzle dropper, spirit swab, heptonized blood sample and your regions are going to be 0.5% sodium chloride and distilled water. For the introduction of this practical, as you know that when blood or red blood cells, they are placed in a hypotonic solution they are going to swell and burst because water is going to move into the cells by osmosis and if placed in a hypertonic solution the cells will shrink or crenate. So the ideal physiological isotonic concentration is 0.9%. By using the solution of 0.5% sodium chloride we are going to create a range of hypotonic solutions and the normal range of osmotic fragility is going to be 0.3% sodium chloride till 0.5% sodium chloride. The procedure of this practical is that we are going to place our clean 15 test tubes in a rack in a row. The first test tube is going to be labeled as S and the last 15th test tube is going to be labeled W. Now we are going to prepare a range of hypotonic saline solutions. The first test tube I am going to place 25 drops of 0.5% sodium chloride and no drop of water and this has a concentration of 0.5% of sodium chloride hence it was labeled S. In the second test tube I am going to add 24 drops of sodium chloride and 1 drop of water. 1 drop of, drop, uh, wa uh, one drop of water basically dilutes the solution by 0.2% hence this solution is now of 0.48% sodium chloride solution. Third test tube, I'm going to add 23 drops of sodium chloride and 2 drops of water, making this test tube a concentration of 0.46%. Using the same manner, I'm going to prepare rest of the solutions. Except for the last one, the 15th test tube labeled W, I'm going to add 25 drops of distilled water, which has 0% of sodium chloride solution in it. Now, by using this method, we have prepared test tubes with the first test tube of the most, uh, our most hypertonic solution and the last test tube of most hypotonic solution. After this, we are going to add one drop of blood in each of these test tubes and wait for at least one hour. We can wait for more time, the result will get more prominent. What will be the result after one hour is that we are going to note the colors of the test tube. The beginning test tubes are going to have the red, red blood cell or blood settled at the bottom and a clear supertetent water at the top. Hence we say that sedimentation has occurred in this test tube or in the beginning of the test tubes. Finally, a test tube is going to come in which there is going to be settled blood and red blood cells at the bottom with a pink tinge on the solution on the top. So there is going to be a pink tinge of supernatant as the color in which sedimentation has occurred as well as hemolysis. So this is the beginning of our range. Finally, along the serial U-tubes, we're going to come across a test tube which has uniform red color. What has happened in this test tube is that complete hemolysis has occurred of all of the red blood cells. And the next test tubes or next few test tubes are all going to be of the same color in which hemolysis has occurred completely, we are going to label it as hemolysis. The range where hemolysis began and where the hemolysis has completed, this is our osmotic fragility of red blood cell range, which usually has a normal value of 0.3% of sodium chloride to 0.5% of sodium chloride, plus minus the errors, in which the concentrated range once of hemolysis occurs and in the diluted test tube, hemolysis is actually complete. Now I am going to show you the picture of it. To begin with our procedure, 
the, these are your 15 test tubes in which the range of hypotonic sodium chloride solution has already been prepared as the method I told you with. So this is your first test tube labeled S and your 15th test tube labeled W. We are going to add one drop of blood in all of these test tubes. Now we are going to mix them well and place it back in the rack for one hour. This procedure is going to be repeated in all of the test tubes. The precautions for this practical is that the test tubes need to be properly labeled. Equal, equal amount of blood should be added to each test tube. There should be proper light, uh, lighting when observing the test tube results and there should be no unwanted ad admixture of the solutions in the test tubes. Uh, this is going to be our end result after one hour. The first test tube, which was labeled S, and a series of the next test tubes. There is going to be sedimentation of the blood with clear supernatant fluid on top. Finally, there's going to be a pink tinge. This is when hemolysis has started from this test tube. And eventually, as you can see in this test tube, hemolysis has completed because now the color of this test tube fluid is uniform red. So your osmotic fragility range will be from where the pink tinge begins, where there is sedimentation as well as hemolysis, and where hemolysis is completed, that will be your this test tube.